listen, I'm not preaching our good works. I'm preaching holiness. You know why? Because he said, without holiness, no man is going to see God. Oh, God. How many want to see God? for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Now here's Saul, Samuel. God told him to go down and anoint Jesse's son for king, it's king, right? So Saul said, well, I mean, Samuel said, well, how can I go? If I saw here about it, he's going to kill me. He goes, just tell him you're going to do an offering, a sacrifice to the Lord. So he did, and, and he wasn't telling him to tell a lie now. He, that's what he was, was going to do. <laughs> so God was just giving him more wisdom so he knew how to do it, right? So he went, to, and so when they asked him, he told him exactly that. And, uh, and verse 6 says, and it came to pass when they were come, that they looked upon Eliam and said, surely the Lord is anointed this before him. See, Samuel had Jesse's son to pass there. So, so uh, Eliam was apparently good and tall in stature, kind of well built, you know, and looked good. And so Samuel looks, oh, man, God's anointed. Got to be on that brother, you know what I'm saying? You know, he looked on the outward, right? Yeah. Look what he said here. The Lord, verse 7, said to Samuel, look not on his countenance. Or on the height of his stature, because I've refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Well, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks how? All right. Now, look at somebody say, keep that in mind. This is how God functions and operates. He see, blesses accordingly. So, what he was pointing out and saying in judging, we sometimes are not aware of the language. In the heart when we judge people. To judge is to decide, to come to a, to draw a conclusion, right? And it also, in the original, it meant separate. And it's like a mental separation. So when a person judges, there's a change in his mental status concerning that person. You all know hear what I'm saying? So what he's saying now, uh, judge not. So that you won't be judged. There's a law in the kingdom that says. With what judgment you use. That same standard of judgment. Is going to come back to you. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I hope this is helpful because it really blessed me. So a lot of times people go all the time judging. And not realizing the language of their heart. That that's what God is actually looking at. You know, let's say, for example, if I'm doing, you know, if you see me come in every Sunday and everything, and I'm telling you nice truths, and I'm doing just the opposite of myself, God's not even listening to what I'm saying. He's actually looking at the language of my heart. If I'm talking about my brother and sister, talking about you, then he's listening to the language of my soul. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Now, so I'm sharing this because I feel like this is what God was sharing. And then sometimes there can be some judgment based on the childhood hurts and things that we've gone through, right? 
So if I'm bitter because of the way I grew up, then if I don't get, let God in there and get that bitterness out of me, I'll be bitter still throughout life, right? It's not God's intent. God does not want that to happen. And so he keeps pleading because he wants to heal us and he wants to give us a better life. Somebody say better life. This is why Christ died, that we might have life to the full. But we got to let him get down there to that area where maybe, let's say, maybe dad did me wrong. And I, I still hadn't really dealt with that adequately. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm just trying to make a point. Okay. All right. So now, uh, that language, that language can still be communicating going out. And I can, if, 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 if I judge my father wrong because he couldn't provide. And I decided my whole life is going to be based on not doing it like my father did it. I judged my father. I didn't understand enough about him, but I judged him because my father didn't adequately provide. And I felt like he should have known and he shouldn't have had all those children, you know. (laughs) But I'm saying, I'm on TV, I gotta watch it, but anyway. <laughs> but I'm trying to make the point clear. I judged him. You know, you know what I'm saying? I judged him as a child and my teen years, and so that judgment, I'm operating now, and so I swore up and down that I would not let that happen to me. But the judgment has me bound. The judgment has me bound. I can't go beyond because God said with the standard that you use, it's going to come back to you. So I'm trying to go above the standard and I judged him wrong. And God said, you got to deal with that wrong judgment first. And let me heal that heart so that you can see things from a different perspective. Isn't that right? I judged him based on the image. And God says, You got out of your role and you played the role of God. Anybody hear what I'm saying? All right. Okay, so the language is so. And then he said this year, he he said, first of all, that we shouldn't judge. And then he said it's a language not perceived. In other words, basically he was saying that uh, we don't perceive that language. We, we, We haven't ascertained adequately the language of our heart. You know, sometimes people can just be saying things and never listening to the content of this thing that is the heart that is coming from. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, what he's saying, he, what he said to me is that, that um, it's basically important that we listen sometimes to our heart. Sometimes our heart may be crying out and saying things that we're not paying attention to. It may be trying to show us where we need some help. And uh, so, so he, said, he said it's a language not perceived. All right. Now, so uh, the language that's not perceived or not grasped or, not, or language that we weren't consciously aware of or come to realize or understand. Um, I, I look at the Corinthians church here. In Corinthians eleven thirty one. When, when they were doing, with, doing the communion, remember that? Anybody read that? When he said uh, uh, they, they didn't properly discern the Lord's body. And many of them were sick and weakly. And some of them even died early prematurely because they weren't discerning the Lord's body. So I went all the way back to Corinthians. The first chapters in Corinthians, uh, he, Paul was saying how there were schism and divisions, okay? Some favored Apollos, right? Some favored Paul, some favored uh, 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 Peter, and some favored just somebody else. So they were, they were, there was like party divisions. They didn't understand that these were just mere men. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Now this, this is, so it happened in the Corinthian church, and James, and James uh, he's, he talked about it to the strangers, so it's not something new, but they did address it, right? So here they were, what they were doing is they, they had divisive kind of attitudes. There's some people they didn't like and some they didn't. And so Paul had to dress. He said, well, now, wait a minute. Now, who is Paul and who is Apollos? They were just mere men and instruments. And he said, he said, I planted, Apollos watered, but the Lord gave the increase, right? So he said, so neither is Apollos, Paul anything, nor Apollos, but God. 
who gives the increase. Are you here? And so they, were, they, they weren't discerning properly. You know, they, they were, in other words, he said they were carnal and they were acting like just humans, right? So, in other words, there's two natures. The old nature was supposed to be dealt with, right? The new nature don't operate like that. The new nature operates according to God's wisdom and glory. So we, we cannot l judge by what we see and hear. And when you do that, then you're, you're, you're operating in a carnal fashion. And there's a language coming from the heart that God has said, No, I'm listening to the language which is showing the heart. I want to change that. I want you to see in a spiritual sense. Isn't that right? That's what God wants for us. Now, I know we're getting a little deep here, but this is how he was bringing it up to me. It was like he said, I want, I'm ready to take the church higher. But there's some things that I need to deal with in order. So, so this church, I went back, as I said, to verse, chapter 3 in Corinthians. Here there were, had factions and schisms among them. And so now, get this, they could not properly discern. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They were not in a spiritual position to discern properly. All right. Now, now go to James. With me, James, in the book of James, he says, Who is a wise man among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, a good conduct, his works with meekness of wisdom. But he said, then, But if you have bitter envying and strife, don't boast about this. There's no godly wisdom coming from this. Uh, uh, oh, Lord Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, when there's envy and strife in the heart, he says, this wisdom doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy. It benefits demons. When you study, it literally is saying it benefits demons. So, now, what do you, so you, can you see why God wants to heal our hearts? Because you can be operating and you think you're operating in God and you're not, you don't, not operating in the wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to yield, willing to comply. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's a different wisdom. So what he's saying is that the, 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 the spiritual state of the Corinthians was such that, that they operated like just human. And so when it came to the Lord's Supper, chapter 11, he said, uh, uh, he said, if we should judge ourselves, anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Then we would not be judged. But the, 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 the problem is this, he said, but when we're judged, we're chasing other laws. So there's some chasing that's been going on. All right? Because we didn't judge ourselves. How do you judge yourself? You say, Lord, search me, O oh God. Let, help me to know my ways. If there be anything that's not good in me, make it clear to me so I can operate according to your wisdom and your will. And so James was sharing to them about that. He said that who's a wise man? So the point that I'm making is this year, and Paul said in Corinthians, he said wherein there's envy and strife among you are you not carnal and live like human? So God doesn't want us to live like human beings just human beings that don't have God. We have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. What the Lord was sharing with me is that he said son if you don't teach holiness like it's supposed to be taught it's really going to uh, be a mockery to the body, to, to, to this thing about the Christ and the, and the holiness. If we don't really teach it like it's supposed to be taught. In other words, grace is to help us to live right. Isn't that right? Amen. All right, let me do this here. I'm, I'm going, I, I, I won't I want to go to fat, but. So he said, it's a language not perceived. And when I looked at 1 Corinthians, this is what happened. Now, he's, first he said they are. You're, they're living like just mere people that are not saved. There was division. They had favorite teachers. Then in 1 Corinthians 6, they were taking Christians to court. And then in 1 Corinthians 7, uh, the marriage spouses were holding, withholding themselves. Weren't coming together because they had, you know, one of my disagreements among them. And then uh, the ones that had unmarried partners you know, they just, you know, they just weren't, weren't doing right. But anyway, then he says, 1 Corinthians 8, eating things offered to idols. Then they questioned Paul's apostolic calling. All right. And then 
they were to be aware of the Old Testament saints. In other words, those things were done for the learning. So they were not able to properly discern the Lord's body. And uh, so that's what he was pointing out. So he's saying these things are our examples, brothers and sisters, so that we should not lust after evil thing, right? But we, he, he doesn't want us to do that. So he wants us to be aware. And what, he was, what I feel like God was saying is like we got there's that old nature and then the new nature. Now the old nature is to be dead. And the new nature is made after God and after Christ. And so we must read the word, read it prayerfully, and ask God to help us to, to um, live this thing. In Romans 14, I'm going to go in there with these here, and I'm almost done here. Just bear with me here. Romans 14 says, Okay, well, whether, verse 8, for whether we live, we live to the Lord, and whether we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose, revived and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Verse 13, let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Everybody with me? So judgment, judging, is really, uh, it was big in the New Testament. God really made it big. And so what I believe God wants us to really um, learn this thing about the language of the heart. Be aware so that we don't get caught up in doing those things and not pleasing God. So the third part of that was not only he said that the language was not perceived. But the third part he says satisfying the obedience of God. Satisfying the obedience of God. When we, when we properly... Uh, allow the Lord to go there and to minister to our hearts. The, the proverb says, keep thy heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. So there's a diligence to keep the heart, to guard that heart. And uh, that's what we have to do is, is because the heart is deceitful. You can feel like you're doing okay and you're not doing okay or whatever. So this is an admonition. I know it's not a shouting message, but it's an admonition for us to begin to be introspective, right? All right, I'm about done here, but let's look at First Peter chapter 1. He says, um, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance or when you were ignorant, but as he which hath called you is holy, so you be holy. In all manner of conduct and lifestyle. Because it is written. Be ye holy. For I. Am holy. And. Um, so God wants. Us. To live holy. There's no substitute for living. Uh, holy. It's a part of God's plan. He wants us to live holy. And. Um, and he goes through the scriptures. And I was thinking about how the apostles, all the apostles dealt with matters of the heart. Every last one of them, they dealt with the matters of the heart. So you look at Paul's writing, you look at Christ's writing, you look at... So in other words, God knows that he looks on the heart. So he wants that heart dealt with properly, right? And uh, it's, heart matters is not something that people really take to. Uh, but speaking about the prosperity... Uh, uh, is another thing. When you start talking about prosperity, people light up like a candle. But it's, I understand that. I understand that we are born, you know, we live in this natural world and there needs to be met. But what is important for the natural is spiritual first. If I let Jesus Christ deal with my heart in the way that it is acceptable to him, I may not get all the accolades and everything here, but I will be acceptable in his sight. You know what I'm saying? 
And that's what's important to God. That's what's so important to God. Because God don't look at what we see. And I remember God saying, uh, uh, when somebody had made a comment about the Lord, we did all these things or something like that, all the great work. And then he said, the things that is uh, highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. I thought, God, I want you to help me to make the distinction. I want to be healthy in the sight of God. I don't want to build and do all these things here, and I'm not acceptable with God, right? I want him to be pleased, and you want him to be pleased. So that's why God has given to us this word. So finally here, uh, we keep our guard our heart. David said in Psalms 26 to try my reins in my heart. See if there is be any wicked way in me. But he wanted God to search him, right? Uh, about Proverbs 23 says, as he thinketh in his heart, right? So is he. And the biggie is Psalm 51. But David, when he was repenting, said, Lord, you desire truth in the inward part. Wow, God. In other words, nobody may not see it, but they'll see the fruit of it, right? When our hearts uh, is changing before the Lord, then people begin to see it. They'll see the change because it, comes, it manifests outwardly. And that's what God wants out of our life. Now listen, I'm not preaching our good works. I'm preaching holiness. You know why? Because he said without holiness, no man is going to see God. Oh, God. How many want to see God? Well, we're not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to see God. And I, I, my prayer is that we are building on the right foundation, Christ. Christ makes all this possible. It's not in ourselves, but in Christ. And then Philippians 2, and I'm closing with this. He says, this is, we're talking about heart now. He says, do all things without murmuring and disputing, right? So you see that language of the heart, the, the heart starts to murmur and complain. And, uh, but, you know, it's, God is one to, he, he's, he's doing it. He's working because he told me, he said, I'm working, I'm moving. And he said, Satan is, 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 is fighting me. So it is the appointed time and God is moving, right? And although Satan is fighting it, we don't want to look at the fact that Satan is fighting. But we want to look at the fact that God is moving because he said he's moving, right? So no matter what it looks like, don't, don't, don't be distracted by the stuff that people are doing. And, and, and he said, oh, God, what's going on? <laughs> don't, don't, don't even go there. You just keep your focus on God. God is at work. God is moving. And he may be sanctifying us, but he's moving, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is at work. And after we are tried, then we'll come forth as pure gold. And I want to encourage the saints. Let's, you know, so the, 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 the solution is the word. This is the solution. It's not overnight now. But it's becoming students of God's word. All of us have the opportunity to get into that word and begin to read it. This is our life, right? This is our life. It's more than just a word. It's more than just when we show up on Sunday. It's, it's our life. We're born of God. We're born of his word. So each one of us must get in that word. And I promise you this. If each one of us get in that word, and make it a diet, our diet, six months to a year, you're going to see such a difference in, in, in everything. And I'm telling you, this thing works. This gospel works. It works. But we must apply it, right? So I just want to encourage you in the Lord. Don't you be discouraged, but keep your eyes on God. And remember, just let God examine the heart. If God wants to examine our heart, just say, God, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Examine me. Prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Try my mind in my heart. If there be anything in me that shouldn't be, take it out. Hallelujah. You'll be the better for it, right? You know what? You know what? One concluding thought is this year. Proverbs says... If you'll take that word, let me read it. I said I was gone, but I did, that thought just came right back. Proverbs 3. Show you the benefits of that. God gives you things to do, but he gives us benefits. He says,
Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. And then he says, My son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my command. Everybody see it? Let your heart keep my commandments. Why? Because length of days and long life and peace shall they add to your life. I want to live. I want to live a long time. You want to live a long time, right? People are dying with stress. People are dying uh, from other things in the heart realm. They're dying. They're dying with things that just happening. But God said, I want you to live a long time. But if you keep my word, put it in your heart there so that when things come up, you refer to God's word. God says it's written. God says it's written. God is raising up a generation of people that will have a standard of living in their lives. Did you not know that this world as it is and the nation at large, the standards are going down fast? And God is saying, look, my word doesn't change. I still need a people that will stand and lift us and, and walk in a standard that is not blended with the world. Isn't that right? A standard. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. And I believe that we have the wonderful opportunity to do and to be all that God has. Let's remember, let's not judge. Let's lay aside judging. Now, I know that's an age-old habit that a lot of people, that happened in the Corinthian church. It happened to James, when James scattered it, when Peter talked about the people, it happened to all of those. And so it's nothing new. We're no different than anybody else. But the important thing is this. We learn by what the mistakes that they've made and we can do better with the help of God. We can and we will. And I'm going to take this clip from Obama. Obama. Yes, we can. All right? Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Hallelujah. I don't care how much has happened in the past. Yes, we can. I got something to add. With the help of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.